Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Harisam Sharma. I am a comparative programmer with over three years of experience, and I am also a master on code forces. So, in today's video, we'll be discussing about a very interesting graph algorithm, which is pretty well known, and yet is highly misunderstood by people. Finding bridges and articulation points in graphs. As you might already know, there are those edges and nodes respectively in a graph upon whose removal the graph becomes disconnected. Okay, so the reason why most people have simply you know crammed the code for this is that most of the articles and videos which are available on it over the internet are either too confusing or they simply state the algorithm without discussing the actual idea behind it. You know they simply introduce two weird arrays called in. And low or something like that, and somehow updating these two arrays as the algorithm proceeds. Now we will be understanding every little detail with a very high level of clarity, and using the concept of what is called the DFS tree of a graph. Okay. Now whenever we do a DFS on a graph, there are some edges through which you know we visit new, unvisited nodes, which are the dark edges in this animation, and some edges through which we visit already visited nodes, which are the light edges in this animation. Okay. So if we only look at the subset of edges containing all of the dark edges then we will end up with a tree rooted at the node from which you know we started our dfs now this is the spanning tree of our graph of course and if we also include the light edges the structure formed is known as the dfs tree of a graph the dark edges are called forward edges or tree edges whereas the light edges are called back edges now an extremely important property of the dfs tree is that back edges in a dfs tree always connect a node to its descendant or ancestor in the dfs tree now this can be very easily proved as well so if we pick any two vertices u and v in our graph such that neither of them is a descendant of the other in the dfs tree and we claim that there is a back edge between them then while doing dfs if let's say that without loss of generality we first visit the node u before v then we can directly use the edge from u to v to visit v making the edge a forward edge and so we have a contradiction now that we know about the dfs tree of a graph we can look at the problem of identifying bridges and articulation points from a different point of view altogether now what exactly is a bridge edge first of all it's obvious that an edge which is a back edge in the dfs tree can never be a bridge edge okay so this is because even if we remove that edge the forward edges still form a spanning tree of the graph and so the graph remains connected now let's shift our focus towards the forward edges so when will a forward edge between u and v with u as a parent of v in the dfs tree not be a bridge well it's natural to see that this will happen if and only if there is a way for us to reach from the subtree of v up to u or some ancestor of u now that's because we've already seen that back edges always connect nodes to their ancestors or descendants and since we just removed an edge from our spanning tree the tree is now disconnected and the only way the graph still remains connected is through back edges right so in order for us to check whether the edge from u to v is a bridge or not we simply need to check whether there is a back edge going from some node in the subtree of v up to u or some ancestor of u now this check can be very easily done using dynamic programming and this is exactly how the in and low arrays come into existence now instead of using the in time we'll actually be using the depth and low arrays okay where depth of u will store the depth of a node uh, in the dfs tree of the graph and low of u will store the minimum depth of a node which is connected to some node in the subtree of u through a back edge okay so try to meditate on this definition of low of u and you know rewind this video again and again until you're completely sure of it okay now we all know how to compute the depth of a node while doing dfs so if there's a forward edge from u to v then we can simply assign depth of v as depth of u plus 1 similarly computing low of u is also not hard at all well the back edge that connects the subtree of u to the node with the smallest depth will either have u as one of its endpoints or it will have some node in the strict subtree of u as one of its endpoints okay so low of u will either be the minimum depth of a node v such that you know there's a back edge from u to v or it will be the minimum value of low of v such that you know v is a child of u in the dfs tree and that is how the algorithm works while doing dfs from u if we get to a node v which is already visited then we have just encountered a back edge so we can simply do low of u is equal to minimum of low of u and depth of v 
otherwise we are at a forward edge and we can simply do low of u is equal to minimum of low of u and low of v right so once both the areas are computed an edge from u to v where u is the parent of v in the dfs tree will be a back edge if and only if low of v is smaller than or equal to depth of u because it is the only case that a back edge exists which goes from the subtree of v up to u or some node which is an ancestor of u right and we're done so that's how simple it is to visualize this algorithm without getting confused with any of the areas that are defined like all you needed to understand was the concept of dfs trees in fact dfs trees don't just help us in finding bridges and articulation points they are also useful in a variety of graph visualization problems right okay so we've seen how to find bridges in a graph but what about articulation points well the method is pretty much the same we'll still be using the array low that we've computed the only difference is in the conditions right so for a node u to be an articulation point it should either be the root of the dfs tree and it should have more than one children or if it's not the root then it should have at least one child v such that there is no back edge from the subtree of v up to some ancestor of u so the second condition can be simply interpreted as checking whether there exists a child v of u such that low of v is greater than or equal to depth of u so if any of the two conditions are satisfied then the node u is an articulation point of our graph so you now know exactly how the algorithm of finding bridges and articulation points in a graph works and you never have to rush to gfg or any other website to copy the code whenever you encounter a problem involving these so that's going to be it for this video i hope you had fun and learned something new after watching it stay tuned for more educational and fun videos related to competitive programming data structures algorithms and a lot of other exciting things see you guys